Hello, we are back. Seems like a while since we've been together. Um, if you are watching this, this is lecture number 211. If you are watching this, you should have taken your first test over chapters 12, 13, and 15. If you folks at home online have not taken that test yet, then you should not yet be watching this, okay? And we're not going to go over the test, so don't try to pull that one, okay? Uh, you should have taken the first test before you watch this lecture, okay? I hope the test went well. Um, I'll reiterate a few of the things that we've already gone over the test before the cameras were rolling in this class, but I want to reiterate a few of the things that uh, I said uh, about the test. Um, first of all, as I've said many times, the best way to study for my tests is to get a blank piece of paper out and see if you can do the homework, okay? Or for those handouts, you know, print them off again online, folks, and see if you can do them, okay? Now, for, if, you, if you didn't do as well on this test as you would have liked, um, I bet you I could have just given you those same handouts that we've done before and went over in class the answers and explained the answers. I bet I could have just given you blank pages of those handouts that you'd previously seen and it would have gone probably as badly, okay? Because a lot of times what I'll do is just take those handouts and switch the numbers around, okay? So you're ready for the test when you can do your homework with a blank piece of paper, okay? For you folks at home, if, if you had a blank handout of all those handouts, would you be able to produce the answers? If you can't, then don't think you'll be able to do that on the test, okay? I want you to do well. And so, um, for you folks at home, I'm talking to you guys, uh, if you want to ever, if you want to schedule a time to come look through your test or talk to me about your test, just shoot me an email and we can do that, all right? But I cannot email you your tests. Uh, so, uh, just email me a time if you'd like to look through it. Otherwise, just look for your grade on D2L, all right? Okay. Um, I think that's the first order of business. Second order of business is, and I'm talking to you folks and the online folks, I do something just a little differently. Uh, there's a lot of information in chapters 12, 13, and 15, isn't there? There's a lot of information, and, and it sometimes doesn't even seem like it's related. You know, you issue stock, a new partner comes in, treasury stock, investments. Okay? Seems like it jumps all over the place, which is kind of why I did the test the way I did with those problems, you know, letting you choose. Um, but I didn't want to add anything more to your already full brains. So here's what I have done. If you go out to connect, uh, there is an assignment and it says something like, read pages 529 to 531 in your book and then do this connect assignment. Okay, and I have some, some specific instructions on that connect assignment that I want you to do. Basically, that is over those uh, three ratios at the end of chapter 13. Do you remember those? They were on the end of your PowerPoint, so you can take a look at your chapter 13 PowerPoint if you want. But I did not want you, I did not want to go over anything more for this test. You had enough information in your brains. So what I want you to do, the way that we're going to do it is, I just want you to read pages 529 to 531, and you can take a look at your chapter 13 PowerPoints, the last few pages if you'd like, and then do that connect assignment, okay? Um, you are never going to be tested over that information, okay? Nor am I going to assign any other paper and pencil homework. All you're going to do is that connect assignment. Now that connect assignment is worth some points, so you want to do it. But this is for you folks and for you online students, okay? The connect assignment should be called read pages 529 to 531, okay? So any questions on that? Understand? All right. What we are going to talk about now, oh, let me give you another little true confession, and I can tell you this now. Um, I do not have an accounting degree. I'm kidding, I do have an accounting degree. That was not my true confession. <laughs> the, uh, the true confession is t chapters 12, 13, and 15, I think are a little bit dry. Did anybody else think that? 
they're, they, I don't think they're the most exciting chapters in the world. I didn't want to tell you that before because I didn't want to, you know, get you in the wrong frame of mind. But I, I enjoy, and I think students, uh, students enjoy from here on to the end of the class a lot more than they enjoy chapter 12, 13, and 15. 12, 13, and 15 is just kind of, you know, like, how exciting is it to talk about par value of stock and, you know, the number of shares authorized and, you know, all these sort of things. It's just not, not real enthralling, okay? So, if you thought it's been a little bit dry, students typically like from here on out a lot better, okay? And we're going to do a subject today and the next period that students have a tendency to like. And it's kind of a nice break because uh, we're not going to even use our textbook. Well, I, I take that back. We'll use it for one thing. But uh, I don't have PowerPoints, and there's nothing that you read, okay? Um, but, but students have a tendency to like this, this area. Th this topic is in regards to uh, time value of money, the time value of money. Sometimes I abbreviate that TVM, okay? Time value of money. Has anybody gone over the time value of money in any other classes before? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, sometimes people will have <coughs> done it before. Now, most of you here are gonna get a business degree. You will, in your business degree, take a class that's called finance or corporate finance. And in that class, you will go over the time value of money more than what we're gonna go over here. This is just an introduction to the topic. Okay, it helps us understand a little bit uh, of what we'll do in chapter 14. But I found it through the years that it's nice and I think students appreciate to at least have an introduction <coughs> to the time value of money. We're not going to go way, way, way deep into it, okay? But it's going to be an introduction and then when you take your corporate finance class, uh, you'll, be, you'll be glad that I at least introduced it, okay? Cool? Okay. Time value of money. What is the time value of money? Okay. Let's do an example. Michael, let's say that I tried to make a deal with you where you give me $1,000 today and in four years I will give you the $1,000 back. Okay. You give me $1,000 today, and in four years, I will give you $1,000 back, okay? Now, and you knew I was going to pay you back. There wasn't any chance that I wouldn't show up in four years, yeah. okay? You would not want to make that deal, no. would you? Okay. Because we intuitively know that $1,000 today is worth more than $1,000 in four years. We intuitively know this, right? Okay. We know this because, now you aren't all as old as I am, but can you think of some things that when you were little kids were a lot cheaper? Gas. Gasoline, okay. What about movie tickets? Yeah. Okay. What's it cost to go to a movie now? Ten bucks. Ten, eleven bucks. Ten fifty. I can remember when I was a kid and movies went from three fifty to four dollars. My dad was like, that's it, no more movies. We're not paying four dollars, right? Well, now four dollars would be the matinee price, right? Okay. Um, on an extreme example, let's say I could go back in time and find my mother, and I could go back. I went back in time to 1940, when she was a little girl. Okay. And let's say I found my mom in 1940, and I gave her 25 cents. I gave her a quarter. She would be pretty excited about that, would she not? She could go do a lot of things with 25 cents. <coughs> she, could go, um, she could go to a movie. She could probably buy some candy and take it to the movie. She could probably buy a couple of Superman comic books. She could go on a pony ride or whatever they did in the <laughs> 40s. <laughs> okay? But she could do a lot with that 25 cents, and thus she would be pretty excited, right? Now, if I got one of my teenagers today in 2014, and I gave him a, a quarter, how excited do you think my teenager would be? He'd probably throw it back at me. <laughs> Flip it back in my face, right? No, he'd probably take it, but it's not, it, it's not that big a deal, right? Because a quarter in 2014 is not 
worth what it was ba way back in 1940, 1941, right? Okay. We intuitively know this. Okay. Now let's go back to our example, Michael, of uh, the thousand dollars. Okay. What if you said, what if I said, you give me a thousand dollars today, Michael, and I will give you in four years, I, I will give you a thousand and one dollars. There's a good deal. You're getting one dollar more than what you did. <laughs> now you're still not excited about that, right? No. Because you intuitively know that still is not a good deal for you, correct? Now there is an amount, there is an amount out there, and it depends on what you would require. But there is an amount that if you gave me $1,000 today and I gave, that, I, I gave a higher amount to you in the future, there is a higher amount that you might go for it. Yeah. Okay? For example, I don't know what it is, but maybe you give me $1,000 today and I give you $1,400 in four years. You might go for that, right? Because isn't that basically what you do when you invest? Yeah. Okay? So you know that there's, there is some way to deal with that. Okay? But a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in four years. That's the time value of money. Does that make sense? Now, going back to this $1,000 example, you intuitively know that, that money has a time value of money because if nothing else, I could take that $1,000 and what could I do with it? I could put it into a savings account, right? Couldn't I put it into a savings account and earn some interest on it? Even a really, really like safe savings account, okay? Let's think through this, okay? Again, I don't have any PowerPoints uh, on this presentation, so uh, we're going to do some writing on the, uh, the Elmo, okay? And as always, if I start to write and it's not, if you can't see it, let me know, okay? This is also a good lecture to have your calculators out. Okay, so get out your calculator. This is one of the few lectures that if you don't have a calculator, you can go ahead and have your phone. I don't care what calculator you use, okay? Um, okay, let's say, let me draw a timeline here. Let's draw a timeline. Uh, this is timeline zero. That means that's today. This is one year from now, this is two years from now, this is three years from now, and this is four years from now. Are you with me? Okay. Now, let's say, Michael, that you gave me that $1,000 today. Okay. So that is $1,000 today. Okay. Now, we need to think of what an annual interest rate might be. Let's say I decide to put it into a savings account, okay? Now, I know savings accounts do not pay the following rate, but I want to, I want to have easier math, okay? So let's say that I have a savings account that will pay me 3% annually, okay? It'd be sweet, okay? But let's say the interest rate is 3%, okay? Now, I put $1,000 into that savings account today. It pays 3% <coughs> annually. How much will that $1,000 have grown to one year from now? $1,030. 1030 that is correct. Now, how did you get that? Well, it's pretty easy, but let me go ahead and say it. You could do this. You could take 1,000 times .03, and that equals... $30 interest earned, and then add it to your principal and get 1030, right? You could do that. Or what I usually do is just shortcut it and take 1,000 times 1.03 to see what the amount would have grown to for 3%. And that equals 1030. Is that correct? You with me? Okay. Now, how much, this $1,000 grew to uh, $1,030 in one year. What do you think it will have grown to in two years? Now, we are now earning interest on the interest previously earned, aren't we? So what are we going to do? 
we're going to take that 1,030 once again times 1.03, aren't we? And let me bang that out on my calculator. You do that too to maybe catch if I make a mistake. Did you get 106090? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So that is worth 106090 right here. And we took that 1030 times 1.03 to get that, correct? I'm going to take that off now. Okay. Well, what will that have grown to at this point? What'd you get? 1092.73. What'd you get again, Henry? 1092.73. Okay. You had to round a little bit. That's fine. Round to the penny. 1092.73. Is that right, Henry? Okay. And let's take that one more time to see what it would equal in four years. 1125.51. Okay. 1125.51. Are you with me? Everybody know what we just did there? Okay. Now the other way that you could have got this number and just hopped over there is taken 1,000 times 1.03 to the fourth, right? Isn't that what we did? Okay. But anyways, let's just concentrate on this right here. 1,000 in four years grow, grew to 1125.51 at an annual interest rate of 3%. Cool? Let's come off that. Let's say, let's say that a few different ways. If Michael gives me $1,000 today, and in four years I give him $1,125.51, he has earned what percent annually on his money? Three percent. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. Here's another way to say it. Um, if I want to be able to withdraw $1,125.51 from my savings account in four years and it pays three percent annually, how much do I need to deposit today? What's the answer to that question? A thousand dollars. Okay. Here's another way to say it. If I put a thousand dollars in my savings account today and it earns three percent annually, how much can I withdraw in four years? One thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars and fifty-one cents. Correct. Okay. Here's another way of saying it. A certain set of tires, a certain set of four tires, costs $1,000 today. If the rate of inflation on those tires is 3% annually, how much will they cost in four years? $1,125.51. Are you with me? Cool? Okay. All right. Now, we figured out how to do that in a it wasn't too difficult, right? Now I want to show you a different way, okay? And before I do that, I want to let you know that yes, I do understand that there are financial calculators out there and computer programs and stuff where you can just literally enter three variables and push the variable that you don't know and it will spit it out at you? Okay, I know that. Okay. But I'm going to teach you a little bit how to do it the old school way. Because, and you won't always use the old school way, but it's kind of like when they, remember when they taught you how to do multiplication on paper? You know, carry this. You, don't, you know you're not going to do that your whole life, but there's something about doing it that, that, that basic way that kind of reinforces it. Okay. So I'm going to kind of have you do that, okay? So don't just think I have a financial calculator. I don't need to know any of this, okay? All right. Um, here's the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to def define some variables in this example, okay? Let's say um, – and I don't even care about these numbers right now, so I'm going to just cover them up, okay? 
I don't care about those right now. So let's just cover those up. What the way we're going to solve this is, let me write this down and then I'm going to explain it. We're going to use the variable P and that stands for present value. P stands for present value. Okay? P stands for present value. And in this example, what does our present value equal? A thousand dollars. Okay? Now, let's say that we don't know that number. I mean, we do know that number, but let's say we don't know it, okay? Well, I'm going to use that variable, I'm going to use the, the variable F to stand for future value. Are you with me? <coughs> and let's act like we don't know what it is. Cool? Okay, I equals our annual percentage rate. And in this case, what does I equal? 3%. 3%. Okay. And we're going to use a variable called N, and that's going to equal the number of periods. Now, notice I did not say the number of years, because it's not always years. Sometimes it'll be months or quarters or whatever. But N equals the number of periods. But in this example, what does N equal? Four years. Four. One, two, three, four. Four. So in this example, P equals 1,000. We're acting like we don't know F. I equals 3%. N equals 4. Here's the way that you could solve for this example. Okay. Let me write this down. Well, once again, you start off with <coughs> P equals F. And then we're going to, let me just write this down and then I'll explain it. That looks very confusing mathematically. This looks very confusing mathematically. P equals F times parentheses P over F comma I comma N. It's not that complicated. Here's what this is saying. Our present value equals a thousand dollars. We know that, right? We're acting like we don't know what F is. So we're just going to have that be called F. Now, what is this P slash F I N? Well, what that goes to is this. Look in the back of your book the very back of your book in, and look for page B10, okay? B10. If you have your book, get that out, okay? Now, if you, did anybody here not bring their book? Okay. All right. If you, here's a few of these tables if you didn't bring your book. Hand them, you, you guys can distribute those as needed. But get your book out and look at this table. You folks at home always be doing what we're doing. You look in the back of your book and look for table B1 on page B10. Are you with me? Yeah, I got a couple more. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if you got a Xerox one, you probably got, looks different. Same thing. Okay, go ahead and write in your book. I know you're not supposed to write in your book, but on table B1, present value of 1, go ahead and write P slash F right there. Are you with me? This is the P present value of future amount table. And these are different interest rates, okay? And these are different numbers of periods, okay? Are you with me? So, we're going to come back to that table in just a second. But what this, what this notation is telling us, folks, is that we are going to go, and I'm, I can't find my red pen, so I'm switching colors here, okay? We are going to go to the P of F table. What is the I in our example? Yeah, but what is it, what's the number? 3%. And what is the N in our example? 4 all this is saying between my fingers is go to the P of F table and look in column 
and row 4 and put that value in the parentheses. That's all that's saying. Okay? So, let's go ahead and do that. What is that value? Did anybody find it? 8.85. Okay, let me do a big, zoom, big time zoom on that. Okay? This is the P of F table, table B1, and this is P of F 3% 4. So I go to the column 3%. And I go to row four, and I got what? 0.8885. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, so all I'm going to do, and going back to this, let me zoom back out. A thousand dollars equals F times what is it? 0 0.8885. Yep. Is that correct? So how do I solve for F? I don't take that times that. I take a thousand dollars divided by it, right? earlier. Let's come to 50. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the answer? I got F equal to 1125.49. One, one, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what did we figure out? Five, one. I don't care about that, that two cents difference. Okay. I don't care about that. That's fine. But do you see how we did that using the table? You see how we did it? Okay, now, one important thing, you can come off the camera, or come off the Elmo. One important thing you always want to do after you solve for these folks is you want to ask yourself, does this, is this a reasonable answer? Is it a reasonable answer that I would put $1,000, you can go back to the thing, is it a reasonable answer that I could put $1,000 in my savings account, it earns 3% and it's grown to $1,125.49? That's somewhat reasonable. Here are some unreasonable answers. For example, sometimes people will make a mistake and they'll multiply 1,000 times 0.885. Well, does it make any sense that you'd put $1,000 in the bank and in four years it's grown to $888.50? That doesn't make sense, does it? Or every now and then I'll get somebody that says, the future value of this is 88 cents. So I put $1,000 in the bank and it grew to 88 cents? You see what I'm saying? Or they'll, they'll, or they'll go the other way. The future value is $125,697. Really? I put $1,000 in the bank, it pays 3% annually, in four years it's grown to $125,000 or some odd dollars, right? That's not reasonable, is it? So this is reasonable. Is that correct? Now what I want you to do is let's just, you don't even have to play the music, but let me ask you this. Well, first of all, let me ask, is there any questions here? Any questions? <coughs> okay, let me ask you this. How much will this $1,000 have grown to in 20 years if the interest rate is 3%? Okay? You don't need to roll the music, but just go ahead and uh, you folks at home, you do this as well with that table. How much will that thousand dollars have grown to in 20 years? Don't feel like you need to shout out the answer. Let everybody solve for it. Okay? How much will that thousand dollars have grown to in 20 years at an annual interest rate of 3%? Cool? Well, anybody get it? Check with your neighbor to see if you got it right. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Well, let's go back to let's go back to this. P equals F times P slash F I N. Present value is $1,000, correct? We're trying to figure out our future value. But now we're going to go to the P of F table. What's I? Still 3%. What's N? 20. Now we're going to go to our P of F table, look in the 3% column, look on the row 20, and we're going to put that value in there. Okay? So if I go to my table... Uh, my P of F table. Don't worry about any of those other tables except table B1, P of F, present value of 1. 3% 20. Did you get 
three seven. Mm -hmm. Did anybody find that <coughs> value? So that's point five five three seven times F equals a thousand. So F equals <coughs> did you get eighteen oh six and three cents? Yep. Okay, if you're off by a penny or two, I don't care. First of all, is that a reasonable answer? Yeah. I think it's reasonable. Okay, I think it's a reasonable answer. Cool? Any questions on that? So I want you to learn how to use these tables. You with me? Okay, let me give you a different problem now. Okay? Uh, question. How much do I need to deposit today if I want to withdraw $10,000 in seven years interest rate let's say the interest rate is uh, two percent how much do I need to deposit today if I want to withdraw ten thousand dollars in seven years the interest rate is two percent okay you don't need to roll the music but go ahead and <coughs> solve that if you can All right. How much do I need to deposit today if I want to withdraw $10,000 in seven years? The interest rate is 2%. Confer with your neighbor to see if you got the same answer. Okay. All right. P equals F. P slash F I N. This time we don't know the present value, do we? So that's the unknown. Do we know the future value? What is it? Now we're going to go to our P of F table. What's our interest rate? 2%. And what's in our number of periods? 7. Nine. We're going to go to the P of F table, column of 2%, row 7, and we're going to find that value. P of F, 2%, row 7. Did you get point, point 0.8706? Did anybody else get that? Okay, so that is 0 0.8706 times 10,000 equals P, so I can do that one without a calculator. That equals 8706. Is that a reasonable answer? Is that a reasonable answer? Mm -hmm. I think it's reasonable, don't you? What if this was $43,892.12? Was that reasonable? Okay. What if this were 67 cents? Is that reasonable? What if this were $190? Is that reasonable? Okay, I think you get the I think you get the idea. Always ask yourself, is this a reasonable number? Cool? Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions on that, folks? Okay. What I want you to do is and um, let me give you this handout. Okay, so you folks at home know which one I am talking about. Um, it looks like this, handout number one. Okay, okay, that's the first part of it. I don't want to show you the answer. But let's go ahead and start working on this. I'm not going to give you time to do the whole thing. Uh, but let's at least do a few of them and I'll show you the answers and then I'll let you go and you can do the remainder of it as homework. But let's go ahead and play that music and let's go ahead and work on uh, handout number one, time value of money problems, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, all right?
Let's play the music. Okay, let's go over the first couple answers just to see if you're on the right track. Uh, I just did this myself, so check my answers. Did anybody else get this number? Yep. Okay, is that a reasonable answer? Uh -huh. I think it is. Okay, so that's how we did number one. Let's take a look at number two. Did anybody get that answer? Yep. Anybody? Yep. Okay, is that reasonable? Okay. All right, any questions on those first two? Okay, we are done. All I want you to do for your homework is, more my writing is a little sloppy today, sorry. Do the entire handout of TBM number one. Time value of money handout number one. There's two pages, there's seven total questions, okay? So do all seven of those on time value of money handout number one. Um, and we will see you next time. Bring your calculators if you didn't have them today. Bye-bye.